Hello out there all you splinter heads. Thanks for joining me. Welcome back. In this episode I'm going to take a step back from being a Splinterlands player and um, approach the UI um, of Splinterlands uh, from the perspective of a new player. Um, us players have been playing for quite a while, take it for granted, but from a new player's perspective it can be uh, a little daunting at first for some people. So I thought I would just go through and explain it and um, it, it might be helpful for new players if you've been playing for quite a while. This is probably not a video for you, but otherwise uh, if you uh, like this kind of content please like and subscribe and let's get on into it. So I will say this, that uh, this is the home page of Splinterlands and it's they've really done a good job at bringing it along uh, because uh, when it first came out there was very little information on it. Now you have a lot of information uh, to help out you as a new player. Um, as we scroll down you can see links uh, to explain card ownership, the community, how to battle. Uh, once you actually uh, create an account um, you will start seeing status here. Um, as well as you know after you buy your spell book and such and start playing uh, these will update. Um, as we scroll down we see a section dedicated towards tournaments and this usually features whatever the next tournament uh, coming up is and um, we'll hit that because it's also another uh, tournaments is also another uh, tab at the top but we'll we'll get to that here in a few minutes. As we scroll down, we basically come across um, basically explaining the game um, from a, uh, you know, explain to a new player kind of thing and the appropriate links on where to go to linked pages with specific information on whatever the topic is. Um, we can see we have a section here on, hey, how do you actually fight a match? Um, uh, this is the UI in the app. Uh, if you didn't know, you can download the app for uh, iOS or Android, available both ways. Um, looks a little bit different when you play here in game in on PC or Mac, but uh, that's how it looks in um, on a mobile device. A um, little bit of an explanation about your collection, which I hope to get into a little bit more uh, in further episodes because that's one of the things I really like about this game is actually collecting, um, buying, selling, um, things of this nature. I'm, um, I'm, I started out in card games in Magic the Gathering in the early 90s and this is kind of the evolution of what's led me to Splinterlands, but um, that's for another, uh, another day. And um, <clears throat> a section here at the bottom about, um, hey, how can you get in touch with other people and talk about the game? Um, of course, they have Splinter Talk, Discord, Telegram, and they have the FAQ on that as well. Um, you can subscribe to their newsletter. All good stuff. Um, that's on the very, um, the very first tab up here. So when you go up to the go over to the next tab to the right you go to the shop now this is also another thing that really has come a long way um, since even I've been playing for a year and a half um, but basically this is where you come to buy buy things uh, whatever it may be you're looking for in the game um, we'll just he hit each of the tabs just very lightly um, and in the future go over these topics more in depth, but I just was trying to shoot for a basic explanation uh, for a new player diving in uh, saying, hey, what is all this stuff? So uh, the first tab is packs and uh, the current uh, the current expansion is Chaos Legion. Um, and this is where you come to buy a pack. OK, so as you scroll down, um, you can also see on the left um, how many vouchers and um, uh, you own personally and how many packs you own personally but on the right is where you go if you want to buy a pack um, and you can see that you can buy a pack for 4,000 credits um, or you can pay with credits or you can pay with DEC now credits are bought um, very easily bought with a, a credit card through uh, PayPal 
you can load up buy those or if you have earned uh, DEC dark energy crystals in the game or you bought them on uh, another website and transferred them into game you can also use those um, the basic takeaway here is you get five cards per pack um, and you're guaranteed at least one rare in a pack. Uh, the rest could be commons. The rest, uh, you could have much better luck and get a much better card. Um, this is kind of the same formula as other collectible card games have been in the past. Um, the one big difference with this is uh, in game, uh, in Splinterlands, you have what's called airdrops. And for all the packs that you buy, um, you have a certain percentage, a very low percentage, but it, it's cumulative, right? You have a very low percentage of getting an airdrop. And an airdrop is a special card uh, in the expansion that has never, before it's dropped, it's never uh, been released yet. And you have a certain percentage chance of getting that card whenever the airdrop occurs. And uh, we can see here that uh, we're a little bit less than halfway uh, when that bar fills up uh, the next airdrop will occur and the airdrops are generally very nice cards so obviously it behooves you to the more card packs you buy the better chance uh, you get and in a certain amount of packs you're guaranteed uh, you know it's it's usually in the several hundreds but you're guaranteed a drop or two drops um, or a gold drop. Um, so that's the takeaway there. <clears throat> the next tab at the top is called Gems. Now this is our current small expansion uh, called Rift Watchers. Uh, came out uh, um, not too long ago. And this works under the same kind of premise, but this, this expansion of cards is uh, much more limited than what Chaos Legion is. Um, but it works under the same premise that you buy the packs, you get a certain uh, percentage to get an airdrop. Um, and once the bar fills, um, they've had the first airdrop so far. Um, these are bought in a little bit different way, though. Um, you cannot use just credits to buy these. Okay, so this is a um, one of the cryptocurrencies used in game is called SPS and you can see that um, you have to use SPS to buy uh, Rift Watcher packs and vouchers which is another cryptocurrency um, without getting too in-depth and, and making this too confusing uh, let me just leave it at you can't just buy this with credits off of you purchase off your credit card you would actually have to go in game or go on one of the other websites where you buy cryptocurrency, buy these two cryptocurrencies if you don't have any currently, bring them into game, and then you could buy um, these special packs. Um, what I would say for new users, um, beginners, if you get into the game and you see some Rift Watcher cards that you like, it would probably be easier just to buy them off of the off of the uh, the store, okay, in the the auction market, um, and I, I think that that really applies across the board when I'm talking uh, to new users. Opening packs is fun, but it's not the best way to build your deck as a new player. Uh, even whenever I started a year and a half ago, the best advice I think still holds is the best way to build your deck is to buy singles in the store um, and build your deck that way. Um, because mainly when you buy packs, yes, you have a percentage chance of getting a really nice card, but you also get a percentage chance, a higher percentage chance of getting stuff that you don't really need at that certain point and wouldn't serve to strengthen um, a splinter you're working on. So at this point, and it, it fluctuates, the value fluctuates, right? So, you know, a couple weeks ago when these came out, it was 72 SPS and a voucher per pack. So now it's up to 89 SPS uh, plus one voucher per pack. So um, 
another uh, another pack to buy. Um, and once again, once these sell out, they're gone, and they're they're a lot more limited than what Chaos Legion is. So the next tab over is Tower Defense. Now, Tower Defense is a separate game um, being developed by a different company um, in collaboration with Splinterlands. Um, and it it's going to follow, without getting too deep on it, it's going to follow um, the traditional Tower Defense type game. Um, and what they're doing is they're selling packs. And when you buy a pack and uh, when, you, when you open it, uh, once they fully launch and let you open them, um, you will have different items you can use in the def tower defense game. Okay. And once again, just like the other packs, they're following the, the airdrop procedure. So you buy a pack, you have a certain percentage chance of um, getting a really nice drop at certain points. Okay. Down here, as we scroll down, we see an example of their, um, it's very early on in production, um, and obviously everything can change, but um, this is uh, their artwork for what it, it, uh, their idea for the game is. Um, and as you accumulate cards, you accumulate the towers to help yourself win the game, basically. Um, you accumulate heroes and uh, accumulate in-game NFT benefits. So you can, um, obviously, once again, everything is uh, up for change because they're still building it out. But um, you can use, um, they've stated that you will be able to use your actual Splinter Lands cards inside the game for, you know, to buff yourself up and to do other good things for yourself. So, um, so you can buy packs currently and <clears throat> once again, um, you come to the uh, buy packs screen, and um, these packs are uh, you can buy them with credits, um, you can buy them with DEC, and if you include vouchers with each pack, one uh, you get a, a significant discount. So, um, just something else to think about. Now, one nice thing about buying tower defense packs at this point is that you will be getting an airdrop for the next year okay they just started it so it's a little bit under three uh, a little bit under a year but if we go over to the splinter shards page which shows basically investment and what's happening with what you have invested you will see down here um, under nightmare rewards um, you will get a certain amount of SPS drop per day for each pack. So I have five packs bought and this is one day. So almost half an SPS for five packs. That just kind of gives you a general idea of what's going on there. But that's a benefit. Um, for those that have been around for a while, you know that we did get SPS drop uh, for a year um, based on all our basically all our holdings within the game. Uh, whether it be land, whether it be uh, cards, etc. Um, but that cutoff uh, after a year was nice while it lasted. But this is just another way to go ahead and get a little bit of SPS coming into your account, especially uh, if you like tower defense games. I'm a fan of tower defense games. Um, I wasn't really a fan of the artwork, very mobile uh, kind of oriented, but I want, uh, I'll definitely be playing it, uh, at least to try it out. So I'm going to uh, start stacking up a few packs. Uh, I'm not going to go wild on it, but I'll get a few packs. So let's go back to the shop. The next tower, uh, the, the next tab over rather, is the Rooney. Now, the Roonies are, um, and I have not invested in this because this was a little bit outside my price range, um, but the Roonies are cards that are minted on the ethereum blockchain okay and um, they are all random they are ran, uh, random um, as far as the artwork the different pieces of the artwork um, all generate so everybody has a different one um, so the general sale is going um, and on this page if you're interested you can go ahead and 
uh, surf through this page and read about it. Okay, the max circulation is 6,500, and it costs about it costs 500 dollars. Um, do be aware you have to work with the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, I decided not to buy Rooney because in the past I just don't like working with the Ethereum blockchain. Personal opinion, your mileage may vary. So I wish them all the luck though. Um, next tab over, licenses. So this is the validator uh, node. Uh, this is how you buy a validator node. And my brother bought one and he's very into it. Um, it's once again, outside of my price uh, range uh, and you can check into it, but um, and I'm not even going to uh, pretend that I know uh, much about it. Um, but it is a way, the takeaway here is it, it's a way to invest in the game and get SPS drop on a daily basis, or excuse me, um, voucher drop. So you buy in SPS and vouchers and then you get vouchers drop to you on a daily basis. Um, you can come to this page and read all about um, um, the information. Um, they are currently in tranche two um, and they expect to sell them until they hit tranche seven. So there's a lot of licenses still available if you're interested, but they're not cheap. So at this point it looks like they're $5,000. So, and there are ways uh, within this description to reduce that a little bit uh, using vouchers. Um, but that's also there. Um, but to me, that's a, um, that's a big spender kind of thing. So I'm, I put my money towards strengthening, strengthening my deck and some other small investments that uh, I feel have gathered money over time, uh, gathered value over time. But that's there if you wish. The next tab over is potions. These are the two main potions that you get in game through chests, uh, just playing and earning your daily focus chest as well as season end chests. You have the legendary and the alchemy. Um, and basically what these do is when you open a pack, um, they serve to improve your percentage chance of pulling better cards and or gold foil cards. Really, uh, what you want to do is if you open a pack which has five cards, you want to have five of each potion ready to go. Okay. When you open the pack, there's nothing you have to do. You just have to have those five of each potions in your inventory and then they're used. Um, and it benefits you to possibly get a better cards. So once you start playing, you can buy those on the shop. Um, like if you go into legendary, you can see that they're 39, uh, 39 cents each or 39 DEC. Um, but once you start playing, uh, you accrue these because you get them in chests and such. Like you can see, I've got over 400 sitting there just waiting for me to open a pack. <laughs> so next tab is skins and uh, this is also something that I don't have a whole lot of experience with but you can purchase a set of skins to basically um, you can ch choose a set or you can choose singles um, and what they do is offer an al alternative artwork for your cards certain cards right um, and as you can see a lot of them are sold out but that's there if you if you have a favorite card and you just want to get a different piece of artwork for it. They used to offer a, a, a nice benefit when we were getting uh, SPS drops as they uh, serve to improve your SPS drops as well. But as far as I know right now, uh, somebody can correct me in the comments, but they're basically just for artwork at this point. And the last tab, but uh, arguably one of the more important ones is the guild store okay I do encourage everyone to try and get into a guild as soon as possible even if you're just new and you and somebody offers you to join a, a, a new uh, a newbie guild so to speak jump in get some experience um, 
they're good uh, to get experience with because once you join a guild, you gain access to guild brawls. Those are fights, um, those are matches between guilds um, that uh, you can also earn uh, Gladius cases, which is right here. Every 2,000 merits you earn through your guild brawls, you can spend and buy a Gladius case, which gives you Gladius cards, which this is an example. These are examples of. They have diff different artwork, different background artwork. They can only be used in brawls, and they have, uh, most of them are pretty strong. You have to read through, but uh, they do have really nice powers. They cannot be bought or sold like other standard cards can be, but um, they're very useful in brawls. So um, back on the guild tab, uh, we have some other items. As your guild store levels up, you have access to a few of these other items um, that basically help you out in brawls, as well as once you get to the higher levels, help you out um, where you can buy the bloodstones and power stones um, and use them very much like potions, uh, which I mentioned a minute ago. Uh, about improving the quality of the drops of your cards when you open packs. Well, you don't use potions on Gladius cases, but you would use these stones if you had access to them and you could purchase them in the guild store and then have better luck with opening your Gladius cases. Otherwise, um, you do earn merits in fighting brawls and uh, you also get them at this point in chests. You can get them in season chests. Um, and as far as I know, also in the daily uh, focus chests as well. So with that, um, I think the video has gotten long enough. Um, I hope I covered some good information. Um, please let me know in the comments uh, what you thought, if you had any certain questions, if I said something wrong. Um, I'll, uh, I'll correct myself in the next video if so. Uh, I just wanted to provide a uh, basic rundown of this first tab which, which has a lot of information under it. Um, so with that said, thanks for stopping by. Uh, please like and subscribe and ring that bell. You know what they always say. So uh, I appreciate it. See you on the flip side.